Welcome back. And my name is Lazaro J. Diaz. And now in the previous lesson, we learned what an IP address was, right? That they're four bits long, eight bits in each octet, 32-bit address. And that it uniquely identifies a node or PC or router, an internet working device on our network. Here, what we're going to look at is a, there's some sort of special addresses, okay? We have network ID, broadcast address, multicast, loopbacks, gateway of last resort, and a PIPA. Network ID. What is the network ID? It's tricky. Uh, there are tricks. There are network ID is usually an even number, okay? But what the network ID is, it identifies what network, what neighborhood, let's just say, you live in. I'll give you an example. Let's say you have the 192, 168, 1.16, and you have a CIDR, and we'll talk about this later, so don't, don't worry, CIDR 28. Well, that tells me that based on that math, I live on the 16 network. And this will be a sneak peek to the rest of, well, one of the lectures later on. How do I know that I'm on the 16 network? The subnet mask. X, 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 24 bits, 25, 26, 27, 28, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the bit value 16. That is my network increment. Therefore, uh, this is a network ID. This identifies, that address identifies the network on the wire. Okay? So this address, based on this mask, cannot be assigned to a computer, to a router, to any networking device. It, your computer will scream at you and tell you invalid address for mask given. Your router will also say, uh, if I remember the, uh, the error, I believe is invalid address for mask as well, something to that effect. But your devices will scream at you and let you know mm -mm, wrong address based on that. But this, based with this mask, is a network ID, and they're usually even numbers, okay? And again, it identifies what the network is on that particular uh, wire, what network you belong to, okay? That's what a network ID is. And remember, you do not, you do not assign network IDs. That's what they call an invalid address, all right? Broadcast addresses, well, they're the total opposite. Oh, man, I should have erased it. Let me go ahead and... Uh, Put this guy back up there. We're still going to use that same mask. Based on this mask, the broadcast, we'll put it down here, the broadcast address for that would be 31. Again, in your books, it'll tell you, if you want to send a message to everybody on that segment, on that broadcast domain, all right, you can use this address. This address, if you try to put it in, in your PCs, in your routers, whatever, it'll do the same thing. Invalid address. These are the two addresses that you do not assign. You do not assign to your nodes. That's why there's that formula 2n minus 2 or 2 to the second minus 2. You do not assign these two addresses. That's why on the host side you always subtract 2 because there's two addresses you don't use, which are these two. These two addresses. Again, broadcast address and uh, network IDs, all right? One identifies the network, one will, if you use it uh, in some fashion, which I've never seen it being used, okay, is to send out a message to everybody within that segment, but again, I've never used it, all right? So just know that these are invalid addresses. If taking a certification exam and they ask you a scenario question as to why can't uh, Bill go ahead and ping uh, a particular device and they give you his configurations and they're using this mask and you have any one of these two addresses that they have in the little drawing put there because he's using an invalid address. He's using a network ID. He's using a broadcast address which you cannot assign. All right? Which you cannot assign. So again, invalid addresses. Now, the next one, multicast. Multicast addresses. They're not invalid addresses. Multicast addresses are actually used to send information, all right, or to create, like if you're doing video conferencing, which is the very 
uh, normal example there they give. If you want a video conference only within a particular group of people, you can use a multicast address. Your routing protocols use multicast addresses. RIP version 2 uses multicast addresses. EIDRP uses multicast. OSPF uses multicast. I'm not going to go into any other routing protocols because, again, this is geared to the CCNA certification. Not any other certification. CCNA. CCNA is with those three protocols right there. So RIP version 2, and I'm going to write it up here so you understand. RIP version 2, RIP v2, e, idrp, and ospf, all these three do use multicast addresses to send out updates. How do you know it's a multicast address? How can you identify that? Well, very simply, because they begin with a 224. All of them begin with a 224, okay? Or, because the range, and I may be getting a little ahead of myself in my lectures, but the range for multicast addresses is this, 224 to 239. If you see in what octet, the first octet, right? In the first octet, if you see an address that starts from 224 to 239, that is a multicast address. And your routing protocols all use 224. We'll get into the specific IP address that they use later on because they're all different, but that's one of the benefits of using the newer routing protocols. It's no longer broadcasting, it's multicasting, which is a lot better on your network, okay? So that's one of the purposes, or two purposes that I explained for video conferencing. The only particular group of people can join, all right? And using multicast addresses and your routing protocols, which in the CCNA, they will give you print screens they will give you print screens with these addresses on there. And you need to know what they are to either ignore them because that's not what they're asking or look at them to see, hey, RIP version 2 is not talking to the other router. One router is not talking to the other because one sending broadcast addresses, one is sending multicast addresses. That means one must be RIP version 1 and one is doing RIP version 2 and things like that. All right, so you need to be able to identify. But that's one of the... Uh, what a multicast address is, how can you identify it by the first octet, and the use of the routing protocols, all right? Now, the, the, the fun address that a lot of people get confused is the loopback address. Now, again, we're talking about IP version 4, not IP version 6. Again, that's another course altogether. This is IP version 4, because in the real world, you're still using IP version 4. In certifications, you're still using IP version 4. Regardless of the new certification that's coming out now, it's still IPv4. You may have to identify an IPv6, uh, know what they look like, and things of that nature. But as far as subnetting and route summarization, I haven't seen that in the new test yet. Okay, I haven't in their books and all that. They really don't go too into deep into that. So, but loopback, loopback, because there's a loopback for IPv6 as well. But in IPv4, the actual loopback address. Let me do it in red is 127.0.0.1. I don't know why they picked that number, okay, but that's the number. And if you, pick a, if you take a test, guess what? You better answer that, all right, because that is the loopback address. Now, the entire 127 address is used for loopback. You can ping 127, 285, 130. You're still going to get a reply from what? When you ping this address, when you actually go ping, 127.0.0.1, what is it that you're doing? What is it that you're pinging? You're pinging to see if your TCP IP services are working. You're not pinging your NIC card, okay? You're pinging your TCP IP services. You wanna ping your NIC card? Then ping your IP address. If you ping this address and you don't get a reply, then there's something wrong with your services, your TCP IP. You will need to restart that, okay? But that's what the loopback is. That's what it does. You can ping the word loopback, and you should get a reply from that one. But again, for testing, that's what you pay. Okay? Oh, that's what you would answer. 127.001. You cannot assign this. You cannot assign this either. It will give you invalid. Okay? 
you cannot work within this range. The whole 127 is a reserved address just for loopback addresses. And its use, its only use, is just to test your TCP IP services. All right. Now, this one, the gateway of last resort. And all these are special types of addresses. And there's a plenty more. All right. Uh, the gateway of last resort. What is the gateway of last resort? And what does it look like? Well, if you were to enter this command on a router, Oh, you know what? Let me uh, go ahead and erase some stuff here so I can give myself a little bit more room. I really don't want to crunch everything up. Okay, so you guys can under actually understand it. IP route space and let's just use the exit interface. You just created a default route. What are they used for? If you're trying to get out of your router going to some other network somewhere else and your router doesn't have an entry for that particular network, your gateway last resort will match whatever network with whatever mask you have and will send it out, will forward it out its interface to the next router. Okay? That's what it is. So your router doesn't drop any packets because if a router, if a, if a packet gets to your router and it says, hey, I want to go to the 10110 network that has a CIDR 24. I'm trying to get to that destination network. Your router looks at its routing table, 1011, 1011. Man, I don't have that network in my routing table. I'm just going to drop the packet. So to avoid that and I have the router forward it out to the out its exit interface to the next router, you can use a default route or the gateway of last resort, which is all zeros, all zeros. So again, this is an address you don't want to sign to your nodes. This is, has a specific purpose, all right, of what you're or for what it does. Okay, your gateway last resort, and the most favorite one of all, the most favorite one of all. I'm sure everyone has seen this address, right? And let's put it up here, nice and proud. The APIPA, automatic private IP address. The APIPA, we know that within our TCP IP properties, and we'll see those in, few, in uh, lectures to come, okay, in this course. The APIPA gets assigned automatically when you, yourself, do not assign statically an IP address to your computer or you're in a network that has a DHCP server and you do not get an IP address assigned to you from the DHCP server, then you will see an APIPA. How can you identify an APIPA address? Well, and when you look at it, the first two octets start with 169.254. Whatever the other two numbers are, doesn't matter. If you see this, and this is what you want to do because you could network within one segment with this address. You have no real control of what IP address you're giving to any, anybody unless you put it in statically. I know that an Orinoco, I've worked with some Orinoco routers, that by default, when you first try to get into them, they use the IP address to get into them. Okay, I guess for security purposes, they're using that. But you do not want to network within a PIPA. And the only reason you see this normally is because either DHCP, you had a problem, either it's your, you know, your own either a cable issue, your NIC card went bad, or you have to do a, re, a release renew in order to get an IP address reassigned to you, force that IP addressing on there, or something's going on with the uh, DHCP server. But when you see this, means it's usually there's a problem, okay? So these, those were your special addresses. Your network ID that identifies the network, your broadcast address that supposedly will go out to the entire segment within a broadcast domain. But remember, your network ID and your broadcast address are the two IP addresses that you subtract on the host side because you do not assign those two IP addresses. You do not assign. They're considered invalid addresses. All right? You have your default route, okay, or your gateway of last resort, which is all zeros. That's just to match any destination network that's not in the routing table and forward it out to the next router. 
Uh, we just went over the IP bar and your loopback address, which is just to test your TCP IP services, okay? And you need to be able to identify these addresses, especially in certifications that like to play around like that, putting network IDs and broadcast addresses in, uh, in scenario questions. And you need to know why can this individual ping that individual is usually due to invalid IP addresses being assigned based on the mask given, all right? All right, that's it for this lesson. I hope to see you in the next one. Keep studying hard.